Hey, what's up, Fantastic Bill? I'm uh, driving into the Kamal Cemetery. This is in New Braunfels. It's one of the bigger cemeteries here. Um, across the street, when I come out, there's the. It looks like it's a Hidalgo Cemetery, but right now I'm in the Kamal Cemetery. There's a historical marker back there. It's a pretty big cemetery. It's probably real big to walk. I'll park here and look at the map. See what it has. I usually walk around, but just looking at the size of the cemetery, I'm going to have to Go specific areas. Let me see their map here. Some very old graves in here. Um, how where I'm pointing is across the street. That's some of the newer areas. It says, Welcome to the Como Cemetery. Como Cemetery dates back to 1868 when John F. Torrey donated a portion of his land to be designated as a public graveyard. Over the years, Como Cemetery has been enlarged to almost 25 acres and currently contains more than 12,500 burials. Cultural differences are important. Enter and take note of the appearance of different areas of cemetery. To your left is the oldest part of the cemetery where early German settlers are buried. These graves are very orderly, symmetrically plotted due to cultural tendencies of the Germans to be neat and methodical. Further back on the east and south east sides are the more clustered and decorative Hispanic graves. In recent years, these graves are greatly adorned by his strong religious and cultural influence. There's also a contrast between modern headstones and older markers. Many of the modern headstones you see are laid in ground due to easier maintenance. Many of the older markers are vertical. Also, the older graves are oriented, face directly east, as many Germans believe the Son of God will be resurrected from the east. The newer graves are oriented in order to more accurately fit the plot of land and do not face directly east. And then, just when you visit cemeteries, and just be respectful. It's even got the charges here for back in the back in the time. Trees, birds, and wildlife. These are the kind of trees here: the ash, juniper, Texas mountain laurel, live oak, red oak. I actually have these in my property. And then the different type of animals you might run into here. Monument symbology. I don't know if anyone's... I I really started looking around also and it's kind of interesting when you see the different designs and this kind of tells you the, why the symbols are like that. During grave sides, images either represent life lived by the deceased or as a good luck war for their journey to afterlife. The fallen symbols are some of the most common grave embellishments you'll find during your journey here and you'll probably see these at other graves and cemeteries probably around the world and in the u.s i go slow so you can read them you probably have this one A lot of the old uh, Mexican graves or Hispanic graves have shells of some of the cemeteries that walk around here. So notable people here. Fritz Hartwig, first recorded burial in the cemetery. 
Hermann Seeley was born in Hanover, Germany in 1823. He traveled to Galveston 20 years later in 1843 and was recruited by Prince Carl Sons Braunfels to help found the city of New Braunfels. Herman Seeley boasts a life as district clerk, lawyer, still state legislator, just as a peace major in the Confederate Army and mayor of the city of New Braunfels during the Civil War. His hobbies include writing, plays, poetry, and music. So, another guy, Captain Gustav Hoffman, was among the original founders, Hoffman served as commander for the Confederacy during the Civil War and led the first group of volunteers out of Klamath County to join the Confederate States. He was injured during the assault of Fort Butler in 1863. Many of the battles in which he fought by 1865, when Hoffman discharged around, he had reached rank of colonel. Not only Gustav an important figure, but he also served as county commissioner and state representative. The Green family, there's a whole little area. Now I'm still in use in a nice little area along the river. Original German settlers, New Braunfels, moved here in 1845. George Fufer, I probably killed that name, Fufer. So these are just some of the no notable. Uh, this George Fufer was a uh, director at Texas A&M, mm -hmm. and one of the boards of directors. John John was a craftsman known for the handmade furniture he made. Volker family, some more Germans. He is buried with his three wives. This guy had three wives. Thunberg family, Henry Mother, Leinheimer family. Born in Germany, 1801, they fled the U. They fled to the U.S. in 1834. Hmm. I'm gonna walk over to. I see this one. One marker. And then across the street. Over there is the Hispanic area or Mexicano area. Um, I think it says Anteon Hidalgo, but I'll go look at the real name when I go over there. to one person or his family. Uh, I don't know if you guys see it in the background, but there's some deer over there. They're just relaxing in the shade. See them moving. So this is named for one of the people here. Mar Horse was born in Born in 1864 to Heinrich and Louise Mohorst in Rostock, Germany, the family immigrated to the U.S. in 1881, selling first in Ohio, then later in New Braunfels. So I guess some of the famous graves they'll put here. You can tell the grass is real dry, it hasn't rained too much. Keep going that way, scared the deer off. Eighteen thirty-seven, eighteen ninety-seven. 
Dean Kessler, 1884, 1815, 1811, Ludwig Kessler. They're gonna have to do maintenance here. 1891, 1901, that person. Well, I'm gonna park on this tree here. I came to a different area. In a different area I'm gonna go to uh, the side over here there's deer everywhere if you look up there past the that fence the newer parts way over there Two-year-old Rudolf Richter Eisenhower Eisenlohr. It's a historical one here. Okay. This is one of the ones that was on the the entrance area. Fernand Leineheimer, soldier in the Texas Army, 1836, a botanist, a note, born in Germany, 1801, died December 2nd, 1879. His wife, Helena Reynars Leineheimer, born August 3rd, 1818, died 1895, erected in 1936 by the state of Texas. So he was a veteran of the Texas Revolution against Mexico. There's the helping hands. Danger for the little child. This one would definitely take a long time. I'm by the fence side. See the far end over there. These are streets. There's three streets that way. And I could only see two streets here, so there's probably more. But I can't even see the end of the fence. So this is a very large one. Um, we just came by. You know, cross the street, go outside, and then we'll go to the Hidalgo Cemetery. Where Latinos are buried. These ones, they look like they've. No way they're from the 1920s. That one's from 1884. Probably their families came over here, redone it. Their families are probably still here. Clemens. Clemens family. One of the high schools in uh, Shirts, Texas is. Last is a. Uh, Last name is Clemens, so probably from the same family. Fensky. Fensky Graves. Well, there's a spin here. 
Again, it's been on my shoe. Then like outside, I had mentioned the seashells. I'm in Nolte, old Nolte. Ludwig's. Visit the other their side where the main towns are at the Latinos. It says Gilbert Bush, B U S C H. I guess they could cut this tree from around there. Ella Hamp, This is August. It says he was uh, Company F, 36th Regiment, Texas Cavalry, Confederate States of America. Lewis Brown, Confederate States Army. These are newer heads. Well, one of them is a newer headstone, and they got the older marker still there with the cross. So let me head out to the other cemetery. Hey, YouTubers, so said Fantasville. I finished uh, a tour here, the Comal Cemetery. Went there, showed you guys the marker at the entrance. If you like this video, go ahead and like, share, subscribe. Have a good one. I'll see you.